Welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to go over how to control other desktop applications with the mouse and keyboard using MATLAB. This is extremely useful for artificial intelligence applications, but also simple scripting tasks like testing software, or interacting with web forms, or even automating a task in a video game. If you like this type of content, don't forget to check out our other videos. So let's get started. In order to do this, we actually use a piece of functionality in MATLAB that lets you call Java code. In particular, we're going to use the AWT robot API. So this is a really simple API. Basically, you create a robot object, and then that object can do things that you would normally do. So, for example, we could do things like do a screen capture, where we grab the screen image currently available. Or we could also do a delay where we tell the instruction to wait for a bit. There's also an auto delay, which will wait for all of the current instructions to finish before it continues. And then we also have the ability to address the keyboard. We can tell it to press a key or to release a key. Keep in mind, this is a very low level connection, right? You don't tell it, I'm going to type the letter P. No, you tell it to press the key and then release the key sometime later. In my experience, you don't have to hold it down for that long for the system to work if you are just trying to type something, but if you were, for example, trying to control a piece of software which might deliberately wait to check in the next frame that something happened, you need to make sure the key is pressed down long enough for it to matter. Finally, we have the ability to control the mouse. This takes the form of moving the mouse to a particular X and Y coordinate and then pressing and releasing different mouse buttons. Keep in mind that most systems have at least three mouse buttons today. You're also able to rotate the mouse wheel by a given amount. So all of this together lets you do pretty much any input and output that a human would do to a computer. So now we're going to use this functionality in order to mess with other desktop programs. So to start with, let's look at how you would go about typing something using this system. Here I show a basic for using this functionality. The first thing that you probably aren't used to seeing is using the import command to connect a library from Java into MATLAB. Now this functionality works as expected on MATLAB 2018. I do expect that this type of functionality may vary a little bit version to version though. So here I'm first creating a robot object using the robot constructor. And then we're going to use some of the functions that I showed on the previous slide. So first we wait for a couple of seconds. And the reason that I have a delay here is because you have to keep in mind, this will basically just take control of your computer. And when I run the MATLAB code, the MATLAB window is what is uh, currently in focus. So were I to just run this code, it's going to start typing in my MATLAB window. Let's actually go ahead and show that right now. So we delay and then we do some key presses. So this will press a T and then a Y and then a P and then an E and then a space and then some more things. So if I just run this code as is, what you will see is about two seconds later, it will type some text. So this isn't what we want. You actually need to make sure that your system is set up so that it's able to do the instructions in the place you want. So for that, I have a notepad open next to this. So if I now run that, and I've given myself two seconds, and now it types the text in the alternative window. Next, let's look at how to control a program using the mouse with an example from MS Paint. I would like to display my logo for my channel, and maybe I want to copy that logo into the paint system. So for this, I have a function called transfer image, which I have put on the file exchange. Okay, so this is the code for the transfer image function. And uh, what you do is you need to tell it where are the buttons that we're going to use here. So I'm going to use the red, green, and blue color buttons. So I need to instruct it where those are. And I've made a helper function called get button, which you see here. So all get button does is uh, asks for two coordinates and it uses a screenshot and then we select where the button is, and then you're able to use that information when you control your system. So we grab the button locations for the red, green, and blue channels. And then once we have those, 
we need to, first of all, activate the window. So using the previous code, uh, we click on the button location uh, for red. And all this is going to do is make that window in focus. And then it will go through the image we've selected, in this case our logo, and we'll go through pixel by pixel and copy every, every image which has a, in this case, red channel above 128. And it will loop through these pressing the mouse and then releasing the mouse at each coordinate that we go through. So we're just going to loop through all of the coordinates for first the red channel, and then we're going to do it for the green channel, and then we're going to do it for the blue channel as shown here, and each time we're going to offset so that we end up in a slightly different place. So let's give this a try. First of all, we need to make sure that we have selected the pencil tool. And the reason for this is that I didn't want to program the system to navigate through these toolbars. I just want it to be able to do single clicks on screen when it's doing its drawing. So now that we have set it up, so all it needs to do is single clicks. I instruct MATLAB to run its code. So I've got this function set up to ask me a couple of questions to just quickly set things up. This is useful in case the window moves or other things get messed up. So first of all, it wants to know where the red channel button is, the green channel. And you'll notice that it pops up an image of the uh, region I've selected just so that you can double check things. Select the blue channel and then I select where I would like it to run, and now we wait. Select red, and now it starts drawing. So I will probably speed this up because this is going to take a little while. So what you can see is there's a large region of solid colors and then some sort of highlights. So keep in mind I used a threshold of 128 gray levels when selecting whether or not something was considered red, green, or blue active. So white is always uh, active, but the other colors vary, uh, and basically only the bright sections here you can see where the shadow or the, the light is especially active actually go above that threshold. So if now maybe you're wondering why is it speckled? Like this thing is clearly solid white here. Why is it blue? And it turns out this is because paint is not very good at its job. If I select a region, you can see this is what it should look like actually. I still notice there is a single line. That's interesting. Huh, okay. So there is a little bit of a, a discretization error, but basically the system works correctly, just doesn't necessarily display it initially. Only when I use a select tool does it force it to re-render. You can actually see everything. In this video, we've gone over how to control other desktop programs from MATLAB, both with the mouse and the keyboard. Have a question? Why not ask them in the comments below? And if you like this content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel.